on the top it reads notice to vacate for oh. non-payment of rent oh interesting Shit. interesting so um i have in front of me an eviction letter wait what were you talking about again i forgot Hello, everyone, and welcome to Forgettable, the show that will make you forget where you are, what you're doing, and why you started listening in the first place. My name is Enyo Hunk, and I am today's host, because I victoriously won against Freedom last time. Actually, Freedom, were you host? I think... No, I was host. You were host. I was host. Yeah, I beat Freedom. Uh, Joining me today are my two very good friends, Crow and Freedom. Hey, hi, friends. Hi, friends. Hi, friends. Oh, my gosh. Freedom. You're over your sickness. Or, well, is that, is that like, correct? Can I not, can I not call yeah, that a sickness? I, uh, <laughs> I got uh, better. <laughs> well, as you can tell, we're, we're not going to mince words about it, you know? I struggled through a terrible illness last week. I came down with an extreme case I of the case. I wouldn't call it an illness. It's an called, extreme case of the case. It's called nuts upus. It's where your nuts get sucked up. The K's are a disease where I sound, or the person afflicted sounds exactly like Queenie K without fail, no matter what their voice is previous ahead of time. Um, terrible sickness. Absolutely horrible. Well, I'm so glad you're better. Thank you. I I mustered through it for y'all last week. I just want to say I, I didn't want to wreck my perfect attendance record with all these recordings perfectly on time. Always there for every single one, so... I mean, honestly, I, really I did it for y'all. I think, I think another peeve of that, uh, another peeve of crows is that uh, I'm late all the time. Mm, <laughs> it runs true. in my family. Um, Nobody runs in your family. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're fashionably wow. late in the family. There you go. Good there you go. Uh, Crow, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, let's uh, let's do let's do some updates. It's it's been a while since yeah. I've heard from no, actually... non Queenie afflicted freedom. I'd like to hear some updates. Freedom, before you go, Enyo mm-hmm. teased me specifically uh, uh, off no, stream that, with some, I some wanna... bombshell news. Yeah, oh? I do have bombshell news, but that's an update for after your update because I have to trump your update because I am host. Well, how are you, how are you going to tease it, him and then tease me? I'm the host okay. so with the most. Now I'm feeling very sufficiently teased. He wants yeah, you to go like to so you can set him up so he can dunk on you. Exactly. Come on, set me up. I'm, I'm okay. open. I'm open, okay? So, Crow, that was your news that Enyo has news? Yeah, that's my only update. Okay, so we've got, we've got like, the, the clickbait thumbnail for it. And now we have to get through the shitty intro, which is my uh, <laughs> yeah. interesting fact and news. Please, t- so please we can get tell to the us content. your update. I'll, I'll provide a time step to skip ahead. <laughs> uh, well, my update is that I actually have a bone to pick with you, Crow. What? Um, oh. Because I tried to set up a doctor's appointment last week so that I could get rid of my insane case of the K's, uh-huh. right? But you doxed my email. What mm-hmm. was it? Uh, the one that I haven't used in forever. Big, Big Booty69 Booty or something yeah. like that at yeah. Hotmail.com. I specifically right. keep that Hotmail, which I'm going to call it, that Hotmail email for doctor's appointments. That's my work email, man. Now like, it's just how you blown gonna up like that? with all of it our subscribers. Up. Oh, yes, man. with all of our viewers. So, yeah, that is my news that I had to get a new email because of you. So, thanks. Viewers, You're come welcome. on, guys. It was come time. You, you can't do that to people, okay? You're still using Hotmail. I was doing you a service. <laughs> okay, I got off Rocket <laughs> Mail last week. Or, not last mail. week, last year. year. <laughs> well, um, I, I appreciate that update. Thank you, Freedom. Thank you. Of course. I'll have to be moving to Yahoo next <clears throat> Now we shall transition to my news. I swear, uh, if this doesn't blow my socks off, uh, it's 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 big. Um, when I told Crow that I have big news, he was like, "What is it? Like, got fired from your job news?" And I was like, eh, "It's pretty similar." <laughs> you got promoted last week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fired. You got fired this week. <laughs> Please. So, as as I mentioned, uh, either last podcast or the one previous, uh, I did get a new job. My previous job, we were kind of on disaster cleanup because there was a really bad storm that came through. 
And now at this new job, it is just like throw everything in a frying pan and try to make it work because uh, the program that I'm trying to run basically like fell apart for the past two years. And now I'm so trying to... So it's still disaster cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm trying to pick it up. So it's been quite crazy. And then, of course, we had the fourth. So uh, everybody, I hope you had a good fourth. Um, I didn't. I, oh. so Don't today what to do. I, I worked late trying to get stuff set up last minute. Uh, things are a bit frantic still. And, uh, I get home, I'm a little bit late, so I need to take the dog out. He's, he's been waiting on me and, uh, I go and open the door and a letter falls out of the door. And, um, oh. to give a little bit of precedence, uh, we've been getting some letters from our apartment. I live in an apartment, um, about like some, you know, mandatory, I, I guess they're called landlord checkups or something. One of them was for like lenders came through and they asked, I actually happened to be there for that one. And they asked some weird questions uh, re regarding their green program where they switched all our light bulbs to LED and they gave us like a, a power strip that will turn off after not being in use. Where's the part that this gets insanely exciting and yeah, interesting? Yeah, I'm not... I'm only. Hang on, I'm, only, I'm hang on the on, edge of on. my fucking seat, and Thank I'm about you. to fall off. Thank I'm you. only at a semi right now. Okay. I need more. So there is a letter, right? And I think nothing of it because I've been getting these letters from my apartment. I'm like, oh, okay, what is this about? And typically they send just like stupid news and stuff. So I open the letter, and I have the letter in front of me. Um. On the top reads... No, you opened it fucking behind your back. Like, <laughs> supposed to wear. On the top, it reads, Notice to vacate oh. for non-payment of rent. Oh. Interesting. Shit. Interesting. So, um, I have in front of me an eviction letter. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was a good run. I know. Um, so to give a little bit of backstory, I have been at this apartment for like three years. I've never missed a payment. Um, I've never like had issues. It's been great. I'm planning to live. I actually just signed another year um, like last week. Mm -hmm. And with all of like the job stuff, I cannot think about anything other than job or trying to catch up on YouTube stuff. So you forgot. So I forgot to pay oh, rent. No. And interestingly Jesus. enough, rent is due on the first, right? Uh, you typically have a three day grace period, at least in the state of Texas. So you have until the third to pay it. I've paid on the fourth before and nothing's happened. On the fourth, I was charged a late fee, at least it says on here. And then today is the fifth and I am receiving an eviction letter. That is crazy. Dude, you, it's you said you always wild. paid it on time and everything? Yeah, for three years. So we just got new managers because um, uh, the last manager just stepped out. Yeah. So I've never gotten this, and it's it was a little bit uh, scary just reading through it. Apparently, I have a month to get my shit out of here. All right. <laughs> well, they, before they take me to court. Well, that should be fun. Where are you going to live? I, I don't know. So You uh, could go anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere you want. I know. Um, no, this is like the best apartment in the area. At least it had like the best. Um, Shame that you fucked it up. Stuff I had, yeah. So uh, I, I paid it, of course, today. And then I'm going to try to talk to them tomorrow. Well, hold on. Why would you pay it if you're leaving? Yeah. So you have to pay it anyways. Because uh, they'll sue you over oh, that, that amount. That's a good point. You yeah. you have to pay it, and you also have to vacate. So yeah, yeah because I'm, you're paying for the previous month of living there, technically. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not too sure on how this is gonna end. I assume it's gonna be like, uh, I'm so sorry, and you know, I've been here for three years. You just, I, I don't know. I've never, it's never gone that far. I've so I have been late before. Um, I used to rent just like a house through a guy. And I just had a landlord. It wasn't like a company. Mm -hmm. And I was late and he shot me a text. And he was like, hey, you know, you're late. I'm going to have to charge you a late fee. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot. I'm so sorry. I'll pay that right now. And so I paid it and I paid the late fee and that was fine. Uh, these people didn't say shit and then just filed a letter. <laughs> that is, I mean, 
very much so it seems like you misjudged the relationship you had with them like you were like man it's been great we've been chilling for three years yeah, and then I just all the resigned. while they're just looking they're looking for any chance they get to be to kick this fucking guy out of here i don't know i've <laughs> never know? had like i've never especially with this new manager i've never had any issues um yeah it, it's wild um I'm I'm very shocked that at the very so these this manager is also weird about getting up to date with like texting. So mm -hmm. I was trying to schedule something with them and I'm like trying to call her and she's like, oh no no no, uh, I have this new texting thing. Just text me. I hate how companies are just like, oh no, just text. Don't call. Interesting. And uh, so, so I was like texting her about getting. I just bought a new covered parking like a couple months ago yeah i was like why 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 couldn't you send me a text that like i'm late and i'm attaching a fee i would have paid it yesterday right immediately so i'm assuming that maybe they just have to do this and they'll just make it go away once i talk yeah to them. maybe it's an automated thing or whatever i mean it's signed you know? yeah but like also like they get like that or dozens of documents a day that they just go and sign and then they go hey you need to sign this this person's late on their payment or whatever and then she goes oh okay i guess i don't know yeah notice Probably to vacate oh, i guess notice it is a get notice out yeah so yeah that was uh my day today fucking weird you can imagine the call i made to queenie and uh she was like <laughs> w wait what i was like Pack yeah we just shit. got an eviction notice <laughs> please tell me you opened it with pack your shit <laughs> Please <laughs> get out. Like, Wait, are you breaking up with me? No, we got evicted. And then I'm she goes, leaving. Oh, okay. okay. Thank God. Wait, what? <laughs> so, with that banger of a story, uh, I'm going to open today's topic, and that is becoming an adult. Ew. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so... I would say for me personally, this was, or just like, bills in general i know there's auto pay with a lot of stuff and i never set it up with this one just because for some reason i've always done it myself and i just have like a like i delete the event of rent is due after i pay it and that's how i keep up until, with it until today until three years later i've done this for three years and it's been fine and then i, <laughs> I fuck on up one pay? day yeah exactly uh paying bills that is that that is something that you have to do as an adult and how unforgiving the corporate world is about late payments i mean i understand everything runs on a cycle and if you know if you're late and they excuse it then everybody should be able to be late and you can't run a company like that but like there is man i'm just getting slapped in the face with like zero sense of loyalty damn First, my previous yeah. boss. I I don't know if I gave the update to the to the podcast, but I did talk to an old coworker. My name is now uh, he who shall not be named. Your oh. name? Oh yeah. Your my new office. name. Yeah. Um. Apparently, anybody who mentions my name gets in trouble. <laughs> because you left. I guess, man. I don't he know what he, I did, no. but I hurt this man. You betrayed them. You I, stabbed them in the back. I guess. True. You really did abandon them, didn't you? Now, I talked to my dad about that, and I asked him, I said, okay. I'm just fucking with you. I, uh, no, I really did. And it was during, like, a time when it's not favorable for the company for me to leave, because we're very well, busy right really now. Is. Exactly. And, and it's a personal thing. I got to do what's best for me, right? Yeah. And I asked my dad, I said, okay, I have a job here that I want to apply for. How do I go about going over to this job or negotiating for more pay. I say, do I try to get more pay and then try to apply to this job? And my dad said, no. no what you yeah, do you is you apply, you secure the job, and then basically you tell them, hey, here's my two weeks. If you can do better than this job can do, you can keep me, but if not, I'm gonna leave. Yeah. And in today's world, uh, I feel like if you wanna do what's best for you, you gotta be competitive. Yeah. No, yeah, and you have to set it as, because you can't, like, when you're negotiating with that sort of thing, right? I've been having this conversation a lot lately. You can't go in and say, like, I would like to make this amount, 
you have to say things like the market value for my position is this amount, you know, because you have to remove yourself from the equation, basically. So that's basically what you did and what your dad told you to do is that this job is paying me this amount. So you either need to pay me this amount or I'm leaving. Yep. That's basically what it is. Yep. And they just said, all right, bye. You know, and my yep. dad said, now be prepared. You, if they do not match it or do better, you know, you're going to go to your new job. And I was like, yeah, I mean, money's money, man. I got to make money. I got to yeah. make more money. Well, that's another adult sort of thing, like you're saying, you know, is that you can't just stay somewhere because you like the place. I feel that. And I, I liked the place and I really liked the people. I'll tell you what, working for government, it's so cushy because like now I know like it's different where you go, but like local government, it's, everybody's just so goddamn lazy and incompetent. Well, everybody in general is lazy. Like it just, well, but versus like the corporate world where it's, you know, you have competition and you got to get certain things Oh with, yeah. the, with local government. It's just like, hey, here's your deadline. I know you could do this in an hour, but you got like all week to do this. See, I get the opposite where a task that takes a week to do, I get an hour. That's corporate, baby. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're, yeah. You're a lot more corporate. Well, I'm entirely corporate. I I am I am entirely corporate and it's entirely competitive based because I it, I mean, I work for an agency, you know, of a brand and they can just very easily choose to work for another or to have another agency like work for them instead and do their stuff for them. School and my parents did not sort of prepare me to negotiate my worth in the job force. I don't think that's a skill you can necessarily be taught very easily without having to experience it, though. It is true, but I feel like there's a lot of people out there that just sort of, you know, get sedentary and stay where they're at. I was sort of in that because I was busy, but I was also being super competitive in, like, as soon as my one year came up, I'm like, hey, I need a raise or something. Like, I'm going to leave. <laughs> yeah. I, I need something. Yeah. you got to pay me more. And I ended up being, like, the highest paid in my position, and I was capped out. And so I think that's why that conversation didn't go anywhere, because they're like, look, mm. we can't pay you anymore. This is the best thing for you. Yeah. And I mean, at that point, that's not on technically you or the the company or whatever. It's just that you cannot physically get more than that amount, yeah. you know? But another thing that that kind of reminded me of is uh, when you become an adult, you have to talk on the phone a lot. <laughs> oh, I fucking hate that. I, for a second, this was turning into like a finance pros podcast. <laughs> but now that you've <laughs> talked about that, it is one of the worst things I will have anybody else set up a reservation for like a restaurant or anything like that like ahead of me i've organized someone's birthday to its entirety and i said all i need everybody else to do or like someone else to do is just call the place that's it just call all these places and set up these things but this is what we're gonna do because I, I absolutely do, hate talking on the phone i have a perspective on that though because i sort of agree with you however when I have, like, tech problems, I am not going to be satisfied with their automated systems. I am well, not yeah. the person who's calling because I forgot to plug it in. Like, I need to talk to a person who is an engineer and not their level one tech support person. Yeah, and I agree with that. Um, because, like, if, it, if it's a complex thing, like, of course, you know, like, you need to get, like, someone on the line for that. You just right? hate making an eye doctor appointment you hate that i have legitimately never made a doctor's appointment in my life that's to like <laughs> doctor okay? dentist <laughs> are you good i feel like that's a part of growing up i mean i don't know if that's just our generation but like phone calls were so difficult for me as a kid mm -hmm. i did not want to call somebody i mean i would call family members but i even hate doing that <laughs> Uh, like whenever I had to get freaking insurance, this is turning back into a finance bros podcast. Whenever I had to get insurance, I had to like actually talk on the phone with somebody because they have to make sure that you're mentally well to get insurance and to like talk to you and stuff like that. Never heard of that in my life. No, uh, that's a legit thing. Uh, 
Did you not have to call to get insurance? I did not. Um, no. Oh, what the fuck? My mom lied to me. You might have been scanned, bro. I think I... I, I mean, shit, I absolutely did I give my credit hate number? people that sell insurance. <laughs> they they, they did ask for my three wacky alone. numbers on the back of my credit card. So. Uh, okay. A, a prince from uh, somewhere. They did ask for my social security, my three numbers on the back of my credit card. and They're, then... buying, they're buying V-Bucks with it right now. V-Bucks? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, it, it was like a, a person that was like, you know, with m like my f family provider or whatever. So my mom said I had to call them and stuff like that. So I could get the exact person so I could get the exact rates or whatever mm -hmm. on the line. Um, I think, I think she might have just passed down the responsibility of making a phone call onto you. you well, got no, scammed. then she got a phone call, uh, from the other person because it's a long story. Okay. But mm -hmm. regardless... Yeah, we don't have time for that. We're not like, yeah, we doing don't. a podcast or anything. We don't. Well, it's it's a boring story. It, it, it's it's ah, not like interesting up. or anything like that. Then, sh then, right. then stop talking. Shut up. Don't talk. <laughs> Something similar to making a phone call is whenever you have a complaint, either in person or over the phone, um, that's something that... I think as a part of growing up. Now, I know some people still to this day will like not complain. Like they'll just be fine with bad service or something. What have you defined here? Having a complaint is an adult thing or like actually, what? actually voicing your complaint, like having a voice in general, using the phone, right. having a, you know, you need to file a complaint. That's something right. that the childhood did not gear me up for. Now, I was Speaking always shy speaking of having a voice um i'm gonna release freedom from his no talk stage he just messaged in the in the chat am i good to talk now and yes you are you're allowed to talk now oh okay thank you thank you as i was, long just, you I was just going to that requests. you don't have to listen to as long as you don't go into that boring ass tedious story that you described earlier yeah yeah, yeah. we won't go back there okay. it's okay. Uh, I, okay i will take that complaint your voice is being heard and I will pocket that, and I will not go back into my boring ass stories again. That's very mature and adult of you. Thank you. You know, you I've could grown. also tell him to like fuck off or something. That would be very immature. That would be adult, immature and, and childish. So yeah, like childish. Something that I don't along the lines of a complaint. I don't know if I broke because I used to be a very shy adult, and I could get very bad service, or I could. Um, you know, ha somebody is doing something incorrectly that I'm trying to set up or they're trying oh, to please tell scam me, me or you something. Don't, you don't go into a restaurant and like complain no, about so all of this stuff. It's not sort of Karen type stuff. Like I, I understand, you know, some people servers have a bad day and stuff like that. I get that. And I'm not like going after people, but I have one specific story that this is bringing memories about. And that is. When I tried to help Queenie set up, um, I think it was internet service. So she has never had a bill that she had to pay. And so I was like, you know what? This Religion. would be a good, just like, <laughs> just like calling her out like that. No, Damn. no, no, no. Like this was a while ago. This was She was spoon fed everything. In her life. Yeah. Jeez, you, bro. you don't set up your parents' internet. I mean, like, when you move to having your own stuff, I, I told her, I was like, you know, like, I think this would be good for you to set this up, and I'll help out if you need it, but she also Queenie, hates phone calls, and but amazing. Okay. It, it, it's a part of the process, right? And so I, you know, told her, okay, call this number, this is the rate that I saw online, and talked to them about getting internet. This lady was trying to whine and dine Queenie. And was like attaching all the service, all these services like internet and like providing a modem and like doing all this stuff. And then the baseline quote just for the internet alone was like triple what it was online. And so I was like, mm -hmm. what in the world is going on? So, and, and I think what happened was Queenie gave off the impression that she didn't know what she was doing. Because she opened up with, okay, this is my first time doing this. You know, I don't really know how to do this. Can you help me out? And this saleswoman just rolled all over and was like, okay, here's all these fees. Yeah, we're going to do this. This is what well, you want. 
That's the salesperson's job, though. Oh, come on, but you're a cruddy person. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's not cruddy, but that's the reason why salespeople are seen as cruddy people, is because they're trying to nickel and dime you for everything that you have so they can make the most commission. There's two different kinds, though. There's true. salespeople that help you out and that you are most likely to be like, you know what, I'm going to give you a good review, or you know what, I'm going to give you a call when I you know, need service. You know, I'll help you out if you help me out, sort of deal. And then you got people that just try to scam other people. Okay, the difference between those people and yo is that one type is good salespeople and one is bad salespeople. They're the same. Right. They're doing the same thing. One you of them just is just leave good with at a more it. positive impression. Yeah. But I feel like if you do that, you're gonna get a better clientele. You're not just no, ripping off. If you're a good salesperson and you have charisma, they'll leave liking you. Like you, you left liking those salespeople. Because well, they're good salespeople. Her and they charisma right. was they working for her. It was going very well. She was about to land a whale of a sale until I popped on that phone call. And I was like, listen, lady, drop all these charges. I ain't paying more than this because this is what it says online. And uh, that was the end of that. So all right. I found the man of the house is on the phone now. Huh? <laughs> you are now speaking to the man of the house, lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make the decisions here. You're not going to upsell me. I see a number on my little screen here, and that's all I'm paying. Exactly. I mean, it's not the fact that I'm the man of the <laughs> house. Have... It's just the fact that she's not going to troll me and make me pay more than I'm supposed to. I have absolutely zero knowledge in the subject of what you're trying to sell me, and I'm not going to pay this amount. Oh, no. I had yep. all the knowledge in it. I did not oh, need I'm TV sure service. Do. I asked for internet and internet only. And she's attaching TV service. Because mm. she probably asked, and then Queenie said, yes, I would like that. No, she didn't. She was like, oh, no, I just need internet. And then she was just like attaching all these fees. I was like, no, 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 no. That's not how that works. I'm just saying, you know, the, the person was just doing their job. You know, they, they are trying to get the most out of you as possible, as all salespeople do. And 100%, what Crow is saying is exactly correct. Can't believe I'm saying that. Is that oh, yeah. they just leave, you just left with a more positive experience with those other people because they got Riz. This person just didn't have Riz. They so raised you they, up, bro. You weren't like swooned by them. They raised you up. You want to know something random that I didn't realize? Oh my God, you're so random. <laughs> he was proven. He was proven wrong. So he's gonna be like, oh shit, change the, change the topic. Change the topic. No, I yeah. agree with you. I agree with you. But I didn't get swooned. But you want to know people who sell harder than car salesmen? But surprisingly, mm -hmm. I just found out like last week, make no what? commission. Who that? Discount tire. Have you ever been there? Uh, yeah, I've got. I think tires. so. Sure. Those people always sound like they're trying to upcharge you. They're like, "Oh, well, your tires at this percentage. Uh, we might as well just have to put four new tires on." I know you just came for a nail in your one tire, but I'm probably gonna have to get all four done. And you're just like, "Uh, I, I, I was expecting to pay like fifty dollars, and now you're trying to charge me like five hundred. Like, mm -hmm. I, I can't afford to." replace all four tires i just found out they don't make commission are you sure that they don't make like a shared commission no because that's different no they make nothing i yeah, i they, googled well, it and the sales or the, like the manager makes a bonus for his store but the actual people who sell stuff to you make like they make no more money they do it because they love their job I guess. <laughs> like they're passionate about tires. I think what yeah. I think what broke me was I was just like, wait a second, are they not upcharging me? Like, are they actually being serious when they talk about all this safety stuff? <laughs> like, they're like, no, sir. <laughs> Is this person actually looking out for me? <laughs> I cannot fix a nail in the side of your tire. It will blow up if I put a thing there. Oh, okay. Come on, motherfucker. You're just trying to upcharge me and get me in the new tire. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. I'll fix this myself. Pulls out some duct tape on there. Exactly. Yeah, Flex Seal. Flex Seal. There you go. So, yeah, uh, that kind of blew my mind. Um, I feel sorry for all those people that I was just like, no, no, no. Or other guys, I'm sure it was awkward, but they didn't say anything. I was just like, hey, 
since you helped me out so well, like, give me your card and I'll give you a call when I need, like, new tires or something. I was trying to be nice and, like, give them commission because they're always trying to, like, sell you so hard. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm just giving them more work. <laughs> so now you're just asking for their number. And now it's just weird. They're like, why is this man asking me for They my always number? give me the card. The They're like, yeah, man, for sure. I'll hook you up. And I'm like, well, I thought I was doing you a service, too, because you get a commission. No, you don't. Did you ask them this? Uh, No, but I will ask them this next time. Go in there and ask them, hey, do you make commission? I, I will. I'll give an update. Um next time because i'm gonna have to buy new tires so i'll uh, uh i'll provide an update within like a couple months i want oh, the guy's a, name i do uh too. i'll give you like a first name can you give that's me his phone did. number um actually yeah maybe if we get a sponsorship maybe post his card in in our personal chat oh, okay i got you yeah, yeah, yeah um can i have his social security number if i can get that i'll give it to you Okay, cool. I'm, not, I'm not sure if I can sell hard enough. I might have mm -hmm. to, like, offer some things in exchange for that number. Hey, but you just got a rhythm. <laughs> you know how you like to be charized, bro. <laughs> if you have to go romantic, don't be afraid to. <laughs> Listen, bro. Honestly, I was coming in here for new tires. But, uh... I have a different ring in mind. <laughs> <laughs> i'm stopping this before it goes too far sorry did that was that joke a little bit too too leaps too many leaps no i think like it was... the tire ring or okay i ex <laughs> i knew exactly where you were going thank you appreciate it you really so do you guys have the road. any becoming an adult i was gonna lackey off that when you said you were gonna go in and talk to the to the manager person or whatever and see if they got commission First off, complete care and move. But the second uh, part of it is going in and, like, talking to people. Like, I will do absolutely everything I can to avoid talking to a human being. You're just an introvert, you know? I feel like. I mean, I am too, to a certain extent. Why are you extent. here? Why but are you talking to us? I, but I also, like, understand that... I'm if you obligated. want something done, you just got to go do it. I don't know what changed. Maybe I've had some jobs that were just like, look, we know you hate talking on the phone, but you got to answer this phone now. <laughs> I'm like shaking, sweating. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, whenever I worked at my my Little Caesars job, right, Um, I wasn't, I didn't want to do the line and make pizzas because I didn't want to be responsible for that. Did you, you make know? them hot and ready? Uh, they were, they sure were hot. They were never ready <laughs> <Okay>. on time. <laughs> Damn. Um, they were, they, they, they were, were warm and not done yet. <laughs> yeah, they, they were just past the middle of the oven. Uh, Luke, yeah. Lukewarm and a little bit late. <laughs> Lukewarm and a little late. <laughs> Sorry. That's uh, unfortunate. but yeah, my, I, my my motto was lukewarm and a little bit late, so I naturally gravitated towards the cash register instead because I was not quick enough, and I knew I wasn't quick enough. Like Squidward. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, lukewarm. Perfect analogy analogy for Squidward. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you're saying because he was the cashier at the Krusty Krab. I got you now. I understand. I just made that connection. What? Sorry. What? What? What did you think nope. I meant? Moving on. Moving past it. Um, and you're I don't know Patrick. why. I was fine with talking to the people that came in whenever I was at the register, but anytime the phone rang, I would walk at like negative three miles per hour <laughs> to get to them oh because I did not want to have to deal with it. Was well, like, okay, uh, the... I'm almost there. Oh my God, guys, mm -hmm. did you see that? They hung up or somebody else answered it. Oh, God. Almost. I'll get it next time. Every single time when someone else was like on the way, even if I was closer, I would look at him and go, you got it. Oh, are, are those new fluorescent lights up there? That's interesting. When did we get those? <laughs> wow, I just noticed you're, those. Anyway, the phone. Like holding somebody's pizza, you just like purposely drop it on the floor so you have to clean it up or something. Just, oh, shoot. I got to fix this. Can you take that from me? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, on second thought, I, uh, I just shit my pants. <laughs> can, can you I just announced that to the store. <laughs> can you? Can you? Um... 
Oh, Crow, do you I ever run into that? I'm I'm looking. Run into what? Have I ever shit my pants? No. Have you ever? <laughs> no, actually, have you ever shit your pants? Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah, that I feel okay. Excuse me. Do you think you're the the host? I'm the host, sir. You don't really I'm seem. I'm gonna need you, you really to get checked right now. Crow, do you have any situations of? Well, I want to go back to the shitting pants story. Let's go back it to the shitting like pants Crow story. Got, no, we're not going like, back to the shitting there. pants story. Why? Unless you, unless well, I wanted you to hear, a story. I wanted to hear if Rita Bird shit his pants. I thought we were exploring that for a minute. Okay, I am actually very proud of the fact that in my adult life and mm. adolescent life, I have never shit my pants. Never. I am so proud of that. I have once. Go mm. ahead. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh... I the was, world needs to know. I was very, very ill. Okay, and I just—I'd love to hear all the dripping details. Okay, I mean, if you want, I woke up and uh, I don't remember eating sesame seeds. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's so descriptive with just oh. one sentence. God. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I might have had a tapeworm. I don't know. I feel like that could Jesus. have been tapeworm stuff. Well, he's, he's dead now. That <laughs> is the shortest but most visually like telling story I have ever heard. You're welcome. I am a poet with how I describe things. You set the scene well. Crow, have you ever shit your pants? No. All right then, moving on. Uh, right. Crow, have well, you okay. ever I've... become? Or, ha, have you become an adult, Crow? Yeah, I th I'd say so. Yeah. You aged. Do into I have that? any? Do I have any specific stories about it? Uh, yeah, just like things that you didn't know. realize you had to <laughs> you do. You didn't as, sound as like an a adult. fucking adult there. You went, yeah. yeah. Look, it's like, yeah, being, I qualify. Being an adult is just it's it's the, it's it's very hard to define it's not just doing things you don't you don't want to do because children do that teenagers do that it's not just having responsibilities because teenagers have responsibilities and it's not just being you know unshackled by the whims of other people because there are younger people who are like emancipated or just spoiled and don't really the the only way we define adults in our society is by the legal age of 18 which I think should be raised, really. But I agree. Uh, I mean, I agree if, with that, and and I think if, the definition yeah. of an adult should not be. I mean, like there are people out there who don't have to worry about certain things, but I would define being an adult as like you know paying taxes, working a job, you know. For, well, I I don't think a monetary like benchmark is the description of being an adult. There I are mean, three it's, different systems we're talking about here there's the legal definition of an adult the social definition and the biological definition those are three different criteria yeah also well i guess i'm talking a lot about the social um, okay just like a lot of things that as a kid you didn't have to do and i feel mm -hmm. like our the systems you know high school stuff like that everybody says you know high school failed us but I really do feel because high school prepared me for the the academic world, uh, but it didn't. No, nah, that's complete cap. That is complete <laughs> cap that school does not prepare you for like real life situations like paying taxes and stuff like that. Oh, it's yeah. cap that it does not, or it's cap that it does. I you feel like not cap is not. It ca no, it's he... cap that it does not. Okay, so it does is your point. It does 100%. Okay. Because bullshit. what school teaches you. The majority of the time, this is why we hammer math so much in our academics, is because it teaches you how to problem solve and how to logically look at a problem and be able to formulate a solution. That's what school teaches you. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter that it's teaching you geometry. You're never going to use that. But you had to learn how to solve different types of things. And that's exactly what school teaches you. That is fair. However, I don't think I picked up on that until college. No, you did, because you did it intrinsically. Uh, you were solving problems through, like, the structure of problem solving that school has taught you for your entire life. You just realized it when you were in college, but it's always done that. When you played lacrosse, you trained for, lac for lacrosse by, like, I don't know, sprinting, weight training, you know. You would do some stuff that wasn't lacrosse, but you, you would still lift and still 
work your muscles because it helped in doing lacrosse, a very specific thing. You would do a general exercise to solve a specific problem. Calculus is weight training for your brain. That's fair. Period. That's fair. I, maybe the reason why I didn't realize it was because of my maturity. Because, you know, when I got to the point where I had to apply for colleges, um, my parents did most of that for me because I just straight up did not do it. Wait, did they write your essays and shit? No, I did all that stuff. They just, oh. like, did all, like, the financial stuff like that. Like, I had no financial literacy. I, mm. I could do calculus, but I had no idea what student debt was. <laughs> And, yeah, and what that meant. <laughs> you know what it is. Until I after know the what it fact, is now. and now I really know what it is. You're, we're well versed at this point. Uh, no, actually, just set up auto pay. Actually, I just had a realization here a little while ago. Um, I so I used to trade, and we can do a whole podcast on this later. I used to trade uh, stocks and options. Oh, so this is finance bro. You are a finance bro. I am a little bit of a finance bro. And I uh, understand what, how, um, God, what is that called? It starts with an I. Interest. I understand how interest works through like dividends when you hold a stock for a long period of time and they pay you a little bit for holding it, right? Mm-hmm. I never applied that knowledge towards uh, student debt and what interest means on that. Oh, uh, so you, you understood interest in the way that made you money? But you didn't understand interest in the way that took away more mountains of money. Yeah, um, I just had a ah. hard realization that uh, at the rate I'm paying, um, I'm basically just paying the the, the interest. Tough. <laughs> like fun, barely paying the amount, and I was like, well, "Oh my god, are you kidding me?" On the plus side, you did just get evicted, so you'll have more money to pay that with. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> That is true. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to re- to record. I might have to steal from McDonald's down the street. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Get that McDonald's. I don't Wi-Fi. know if they still have Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. No, Taco be Bell. To... Taco Bell is better. Okay. Okay. I'll be in the Taco Bell. Probably camp in the bathroom, maybe. <laughs> hey guys, and your hawk here, back from the Taco Bell bathroom. Then you're in the other stall. Have you ever experienced that? By the way, we're like. You uh, you go into a bathroom, mm-hmm. and then the person next to you is just having a rough time, you know? So they're, like, going off in the other stall, literally moaning and all, you know? Here's like, what you have do. you guys ever experienced that? No, but here's what you do. You, f- you finish up, you walk out, you hit the lights. <laughs> you <leave>. uh, <laughs> yeah. What is that supposed to do? Is that, like... It's, a, it's supposed to... Plunge them further into darkness. Oh, okay. I was, I was gonna say, are you are you like trying to help release the demon, or are you trying who taught, to who, help who, the demon? Who said you were trying to help? I didn't say this is how you help. I see you were dooming them. Yeah, dude. I just wonder like how that person feels, you know? Because obviously this is like probably the one and only time that they've ever done that. You depends. know? Depends. Depends. There it, are some people that just do that on a consistent basis. Like, it doesn't matter what they eat, it just sounds like that. And I think I think you just become deaf to your own noise. And you're just like, yeah, that's what it is. You know, I'm that guy God. that everybody, you know, writes horror stories about. I'm a moaner. <laughs> Funnily enough, same people who don't put their shopping carts back. Oh, my God. Um, no, I have two. So, I have heard the horror stories, and I have also been there uh, in real life. And I'll give both sides. Uh, the horror stories is what they do, and what I've like wanted to do in that situation is like, you know, sort of like ask the guy if they're okay, and like you know, pass them a roll of toilet paper or something, or like encourage them or something. Um, uh, but what I have actually done is like held my breath and hope that they don't hear me or know that I'm there listening to this ungodly experience have you ever tried to shit even more aggressively and like (laughs) establish dominance that way uh no i have heard that like shitting with the door open is the most alpha thing that you can do but i have not tried that yet so i don't know making eye contact with the mirror with the (laughs) when you stream when you stream in, in, in the mcdonald's or taco bell bathroom 
give that one a try and let us know stream it i'll i'll just yeah. i'll i'll stream it um but i have done this before and i i will do it every time is when somebody's like walks into the bathroom and you're sitting in the stall and they're you know looking to see if people are in the stalls and you happen to be in that one stall that just has an uh, like an ungodly amount of like a, a seam in between the door of the stall mm. and the side of the stall and so like the gap oh, is and you just huge. make direct eye contact yeah <laughs> and yeah. i will just sit there and stare like you go oh. homie <laughs> like, stop looking at me like like you well it seems like you want to look at them they're probably thinking why the fuck is this guy looking at me specifically through this tiny crack i'm <laughs> looking to see if there's someone in here they probably can only see just like one eyeball <laughs> <laughs> just oh. one eye looking at him. It's like a horror movie. <laughs> Do it, you won't. I'll stare at you this whole time. So, is there any very, other very adult topics? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other becoming an adult stuff that you guys can think about? I mean, just for me, the most salient indicator of my adultness is just the fact that I have a tight hold of my finances. Like, do. Do we all have, like, a Roth IRA or something? I don't know. S the fuck? Some, <laughs> some form of, like, long-term like investment. Retirement? What, is that something you do when you're old as shit? What the hell is a Roth IRA? A Roth okay, IRA so we're, is... We're is, at different levels, I guess. Yeah. A, a Roth is basically kind of like a 401k, but you... It's, like, on the side. It sounded like a terrorist organization when you said it. You were like, I'm in an, a Roth R IRA. And I was like, okay, is that something you should be saying on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's basically a Freemason at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it means it, it, it means the, the Roth Irish Republican Army. He's enlisted. Just to clarify. Yeah. You're a proud boy. I am <laughs> proud and a boy. I will say that. <laughs> no need to put those together. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Uh, financial, financial literacy and financial independence. I feel mm -hmm. like it's something aside from like the the financial means of it, though. You know, of like being an adult. I think that I'll, because we're in a capitalist society, and a lot of people's values are tied to money specifically. I think that is where many people attribute adulthood being like where people say you're not an adult until you have a job or you have uh, or you make s such an amount or you have this amount in savings and stuff like that or like you're this well off financially. I think it's just something that's like, you know, if you fulfill, if you can individually make and fulfill obligations. Because it's not like in a school sense, right? Where someone is giving you an obligation that you have to do. It's like you yourself are creating obligations for you to fulfill. So self-independent, you know? sort of. I mean, you're, yeah. You, you, I, th I think you're that... able to, to do things yourself by yourself. Yeah, exactly. You're able to... We do to... live in a society. We do live in a singular society. Bottom text and society um where it's just like you yourself it's not even like a taking initiative thing you know or maybe it is I, i'm thinking through it in my head right now as i'm speaking so it's not making any sense we can tell but i think that you. a good this might be what you're trying to say when society agrees that you are to be held accountable for your own actions as opposed to like looking to your parent or handler that's when society considers you an adult. Yeah. Like, if a kid is like making a mess in a grocery store, I'd be like, hey, where's your, where's your, where's your mom? Yell at yeah. Them? Well, that just now sounds if... like legally being able to be held accountable for you. Well, choices. no, it's not, it's not it's, a legal it's, it's thing. It's different. It's yeah, different. It's different. Like if a 17 year old was like making a mess in a grocery store, I'd want to fucking fight the 17 year old. Yeah. You're legally, like, that guy is a dick. Yeah. At that point, it's maybe it was the parent's fault initially in the earlier years, but at this point, that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a perfect way to say it. Like, if a kid is making a mess in a grocery store, you blame the parent. 
if a 17 year old or something like that is making a mess in a grocery store, you know, or like, like one of those young adults. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then they are the person that you hate. When accountability is shifted over to you instead of your parents, that's adulthood, baby. Yeah. I I agree with that. That age is is becoming older. Wouldn't you say? I feel like they're still 17. No, 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 no. I feel like that, that level of accountability is, is becoming older because, like, you know, back when our parents were younger, they, like, I felt like they were more on their own at a younger age. You know, they put themselves through college, they did all this stuff, and then... As the average age, average life expectancy increases, I feel like we will mature less fast. Well, I mean, that might even be a biological thing besides like all the social pressures of like high school babying you. But you also have the fact of like your percentage is less. Your percentage? Percentage of your life. So like when the life expectancy was 30, I mean, when you were 12, you're a grown ass man. All right. (laughs) You got a house yet? Have you seen pictures of 30 year olds in like the 80s or, or the 70s? They look like 40s and 50s. People, I think, legitimately aged faster in some parts of the world. Do you think that's due to stress? Probably. Or just, like, I don't know. You said when? In the 30s? No, 30-year-olds in, like, a couple decades ago. So 80s? 80s, 70s. Like, look at some actors. Some actors in older movies are not as old as you think they are. Yeah. I also think, though, that's due to things like... Um, they were chain-smoking a lot. <laughs> yeah, there. I was going to say it's due to, like, habits and stuff from back in those times and, like, evolving technologies, like you were saying earlier, but, like, in different ways, right? Like, mm-hmm. it used to be, like, no one had any air conditioning whatsoever, you know? So everybody was just continually sweating, and that was horrible for your skin. And a thing with, like, aging is that your skin gets worse. So the amount that your age got worse was faster because you didn't have like things like AC or sunscreen and things like that. You know, you think it could also so I, don't, be, I don't think that's a maturity thing. Do you think it could also be through the evolution of like photo capabilities, also dress and also like well, yeah. makeup? Obviously. Yeah. I mean, uh, like the cameras were worse than they but cameras were worse back then than they are now, which means that now you will look younger on camera because they are better. Yeah. It's not as grainy. Does not make you look yeah. wrinkly? Yeah. So I, I don't think necessarily things like appearance and stuff like that changing throughout time is a testament to like people maturing faster back then. But I would also say that like a lot of things with society were different. Like, I mean, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, people were thinking about the war and people were going off to the war and all of that stuff. There weren't labor laws that said you can't work whenever, you know, you're below the age of like 12 yeah. in some places. Yeah. So you were working and holding jobs and stuff quicker. I wouldn't say that meant that they were m- more mature. Because, you also like, typically you had know, children straight out of high school. Like, that was the yeah. norm. And that's true as well, you know? Like, it's just that the responsibilities that those people had were different. But they weren't necessarily more mature because they had different re- responsibilities. We have less responsibilities now as, like, older teenagers and, like, young 20s than the responsibilities that they had back then were, you know? True. And you would say that would make them more mature at an earlier age? I don't know if more mature is it. I just think that they had more of some of those things to do. Now, naturally, I mean, like, out of high school, I think that, like you're saying, things like uh, the society perception of who was at fault at that point, whether it was, like, parents or whatever, you know, that shifted so that age would be younger, Yeah. you know? Yeah. But, like, I still think the same rule applies today for, like, those 12-year-olds that worked in steel mills you know where they weren't more mature than us but they had more responsibilities true they had to provide for their family man of the house making a dime an hour you know yeah yeah well i think that is all the time that we have for today 
Now it is time for me, the host, to pick who I think I like more today. Yeah, I was about to say, you wouldn't, it, it, no one really won today, you know? And I just wanted to say, also, <laughs> you you posed it as, a, I'm going to completely shoot myself in the foot here, but you posed it as if you won last week, and you're like a second time champion. You were like, yes, sir, back hosting again, won again. You didn't win the first week. You, it, you you were default oh, the you know. host because <laughs> you had true. made the podcast. podcast so that was your first win you didn't win again no i offered it to all of you and you all deemed that i should do the first one because i had the idea that means well we didn't i didn't deem least... anything you deemed okay, you appointed well, I, yourself. I hosted twice and i was excited that i got to be host again i just wanted to make it clear that you didn't win the first time You've only wanted, won once. I just wanted to hurt your feelings. I wanted to make sure that you don't get too excited about yourself. Consider them herded, okay? Good. Um, well, after that, no. I, I think I want to do something a little more fair this time. Um, what, are you going to flip a coin? As opposed to what? Uh, just picking someone. That's very mature of you. It's a very mature adult. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Instinct you had. Thank you. You're just bringing it right back. I love that callback, Crow. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to pick a number in between mm-hmm. 1 and 10. Okay. Okay. Who wants to go first? I mean, I guess I, it doesn't matter. But... I assume that we're picking numbers and whoever gets closest wins. Yep. I okay. already have my number. It's set. Okay. Can you write it down? Okay. So that way we know you don't change it. Yeah, and put it in the chat so Fine. that we can yeah. <laughs> so there. Fine. Okay, I have written it down. Viewers, um, right now I am scribing down this number in between 1 and 10. Can you describe the number to them so that way we can do visual storytelling? I, I will show them. Does the number have a 2 in it by any chance? Um, Maybe a 3 or a, a 9. <laughs> Does it have a curve? Is there a curve there? How many straight lines are there in the number? Okay, it's one, but it's in it's in between one. Oh, and he ten. said it's one. He it's said the number is one. I choose one. One and ten, including one and ten. Okay, you Who's ready? There? Okay. Uh, How many digits Hudson. does the number have? Okay, shut the fuck up, Hudson. <laughs> give me your number. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to go with. I'll have to go with five. Even, very even, pretty safe. Mm-hmm. Okay. I myself, and before I get my number out there, I want to say that, you know, I'm going to take the results with equanimity and maturity. What did you Whoever just... wins. It's a adult word you wouldn't understand. Okay. Uh, whoever wins, I'm going to accept the winner with grace and respect. So I just want to say... Freedom, best of luck to you as, as a fellow adult. Oh, Thank that's you. very mature of you. I do just want to say ahead of time before you picking your number, I know what the number is, but I said a different number with, than what I know it is. That's very magnanimous of you. So uh, I'm sorry, you, you don't like your guess, is what you're saying? I think I know what the I, I think I know what the number is because I've seeded I've seeded this number throughout the conversation, knowing that you were gonna choose this. Oh Jesus. Um, Interesting. But I, I you... chose another number. Uh, the psychology. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, in in all fairness, and I'm in a great mood, I will give you that opportunity to change your answer if you want. I would like to hear what Crow says, and then I'll change my answer. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I guess. Well, Crow, how do you feel about that? Is that is it? I feel like if he should get two guesses, I should also get. Okay, two I'll tell you what. I think I'll that's fair. I after Crow list his number, I will give Freedom a chance to. And then you will get a chance to change your number based on his shit, stuff. No, we're, <laughs> we're we're fair here. Okay? Why? Everything's why would fair. We, Everything's adult. Why would we Everything's our, civil. Say your number. Okay. We are not receiving any new information. Why would say we your change number. Our number? I don't know. It's because Freedom is very insecure <laughs> okay. with his number placement. My number was always going to be seven. Oh, okay. Very, very. That is the number. Very Okay, so this one is Freedom's number. I, I put a number line down so I could, you know, mm-hmm. do number line math. Um, How this, very mature of This you. one is Crow. Thank you. Thank you, good sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Freedom. <clears throat> of course, of course. Well. Now, uh, Mr. Freedom, uh, you will get the opportunity to change your answer if you so choose. Well, 
as I learned in the amazing movie with Kevin Spacey that I don't remember the name of. Is it 42? It's not 42. The the one where they gamble. But anyways, whenever you make a choice, mm -hmm. right? And then the field changes. Mm -hmm. You will increase your probability of success by choosing another option, right? Yeah, so, yeah. because think, the field has changed, I, I don't think, think that's a bad rule. But I also think, I was taught in school that uh, when you change your answer, when you second guess your answer, your first an your first instinct was most likely the right answer. No, that's... Uh, no, uh, this, is, this is a mathematical reasoning. This isn't like a logic-based reasoning. Are you talking right? about or, like the three doors problem? Yeah, because... yeah, the three doors problem. Now, who said it changed? Why did it change? It changed yeah. because Crow has now selected an answer. That's which means not... There so are, are you, three but, doors but here, But I though. selected my answer before either of you. <laughs> Nothing changed. So, I have because, the same number. So because Crow chose an answer... Okay, sure. That means unless his answer is the exact number, now it is more of a possibility if I am to choose another number because his probability goes away which means the other number's probabilities increase. So I started with a 10% likelihood of getting the answer correct. But the and thing now is, that he has the, taken an answer off oh, the board, Oh, are you saying because you're have... evenly split? Look, Freedom, the thing is, I haven't taken a number off the board. My an number could still be the answer. In the three doors problem, yeah. one door opens and you see that it's empty. Then the field's really changed. Here, nothing is known. You've gained no new information except what I'm going to pick, which could or could not be the right answer. Anyway. Yeah, right, but I yeah. can't pick your number. But you already did pick a Correct, number. Correct, but that means that regardless of your pick, you were always going to pick another number, which doesn't make sense. Why would you even have a first pick then? I should have just <laughs> gone first and let you pick after me. What's the... Do you want me to scrap difference? this whole thing and we can do like a coin flip? I got something to flip over here. <laughs> no, at this well, point we fair. need to hear what this number is. Okay, okay. Um. Well, uh, are you done with your whatever the heck you were doing? My new number is four. Okay. <laughs> okay. Big brain mathematical analysis tonight. Hell yeah. Okay. Freedom uh, with a superset of two. And this is wait, wait, did, super set one. Hang on. This Does is, he... Would a five or a four count for his win now, or is it just four? Uh, no. Uh, super set two takes place of his new guess. Um, okay. I am just keeping his first, um, guess on the board just so I can, uh, reference that in, um, my announcement. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, Crow, so that means we would have been tied and it was six. As much as I want to switch to five and have it be five to infuriate him, I'm going to stick with seven. Okay. It's probably six because he's. I that. would love it to be six. It's probably six okay, and we would so have tied Crow, if I hadn't cho changed my answer. Pro superset F because he locked in his F. answer. This was his final. Uh, he was in the alphabet. Hudson, F. Wait. Freedom. <laughs> freedom. Stop um, damn, bro. You're gonna ask Would for you my like credit card guess? number next. <laughs> I'm gonna go with five. What? <laughs> You're gonna change it <laughs> again? Out. Uh, Crow, I, what do you think? Should I just call final. it on the second one? <laughs> hold on. My super hold set on. final is five. My super set final is five. You, okay, you, okay. Okay. What? Okay. I have to know. I have to know. What are you basing this on? What? What changed? I don't know. I think time. he feels like I'm moving the numbers around. Like I feel like. Wait. 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 You do have a sibling. I think I know where this is stemming from. Your distrust. Did is you, did you, yeah, did you, did you have a rough upbringing? I mean, I know we can't, Holy shit. I know we can't like trust <laughs> siblings and I know they, they always, cause that would always happen with my sister is I would mm -hmm. like, we would do something like, okay, pick a number. And then she'd always change the number because she cheated. Yeah. I needed it in writing, you know? Thank you, thank you for divulging into therapy during this session. We You're got welcome. financial advice, and now we're getting and that brings advice. us to our no, we're not sponsored by BetterHelp, but BetterHelp, reach out, sponsor us. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, Get Dr. K in here. Yeah, is seven still your final answer? Like, uh, 
I, at this point, I don't know. I mean, he's psyching me out. See, I him asking again <laughs> makes you question uh, it. It's the me? game. It's the game, ladies and gentlemen. It's the game. This should have been simple. I know, it should have been. This should have been simple, Freedom. What have you done? But as we know, nothing with Freedom is simple because he is such a delectable. Why would you call him delectable, bro? Okay. He's delicious. Okay. <laughs> I like we where love this is going. Input. We, we love him being here. Crow. I'm, I'm keeping it seven. Okay, keeping Crow's it keeping seven. it seven. I have to stick to my guns. All right, all right. Thank you, contestants, for your inputs. Is that or is it over? Are we finally out? This concludes our voting session. I forgot what we were doing. No, we're choosing the new host. Hey. Oh, this is This Good is one. another, nice another there, episode Crow. of Who is the ne Next Host of Forgettable. In our first round... First round? It's a number guessing game. It's one number. <laughs> Why do we have rounds? Uh, so my number was five. <laughs> hey! Let's go! So regardless, Freedom won because he was close with his first guess and then he was also closer with his second guess of four with Crow being one well, away. Well, actually I wasn't closer. I was actually further away. No, you weren't. What? Five is the exact number. I said five. Closer than me. Yeah, closer than oh. him. Yeah, 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 I yeah, thought yeah, you yeah. said closer to them. No, 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 no. You were closer in the second round. Uh, and then oh. in the third round, you were right on the money once again. Hell yeah, always right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the field changed and I had to change with it. Uh, it really didn't. It really didn't it, change. You, your bullshit math just... You, you did the wrong formula, but you got the right answer. <laughs> but I got it right, didn't I? No, 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 no. What happened was you you got full points, but you got minus a half points for the what the fuck in the between. <laughs> <laughs> but I still got it right. Hey, wait a I? second. This isn't... Why did he bring out the Pythagorean theorem? <laughs> we're, we're looking at circles. See, what the this is what we were talking about earlier. It wasn't just a numbers game. It was a logic game, Okay. Because of my knowledge of schooling, because of my uh -huh, uh -huh, 12th uh -huh. grade pre, what was it, pre-Cal teacher, that is what brought me here today, ladies and gentlemen. Because of my speaking, or cut that part out, cut that part out, hold on. Because of my critical skin, fuck! <laughs> Anyways, uh, as host, I'm still host. Um, I, I don't agree with his methods, but God damn it, he gets results. <laughs> I honestly I don't know what the heck happened like when when he first said his number I was like well dang he got it right on the money and then he changed his answer which just threw me for a loop but I he talked was, about switching to five he was, I was you should I was have. have a mind it to would do have it. been so funny I would have closed it on the second round I was not going to third round but I had you for three minutes crow I was throwing in the confusion the misdirection got you good. Yeah, that wasn't. It was completely random. You you gotta understand that. That yeah, was just it was random. a mind game, bro. <laughs> it was, it was a, a mind game, game, and you lost. <laughs> we each had a one in ten chance. That's not. <laughs> That's not how math works. <laughs> And I exponentially decreased your odds of success. I don't think throughout you did, the though. experience. <laughs> well. Uh, that concludes this podcast and uh, uh, freedom by by whatever he just did um, <laughs> determines the winning. Uh, he he will now be next time's host next Wednesday. This podcast comes out every Wednesday. Um, for you guys to keep up with the podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel and Yo Hawk on YouTube. Uh, you can also listen to us on YouTube's music app um, just by searching forgettable in the podcast section it's a little hard to navigate but i'm sure you guys will find it pro do you have anything you want to plug do i ever i mean do you want to plug uh, uh probability <laughs> go look up uh oiler's theorem or something i don't know oiler's theorem okay okay yeah okay. freedom you got anything you want to plug i would like to plug the movie 21 for rocketing me to success today teaching me very very useful probability skills that led to my victory so that is uh, what i would like to thank everyone go watch it you will dominate in every single critical thinking mental game straight that you come across this man is more of a legend than a host really i mean i i'm i'm surprised 
We got him on here. <sighs> well, I look forward to more of his bullshit next time. <laughs> Uh, anyways, this podcast has been forgettable. <laughs>